بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله وبياكم مرحبا بكم May Allah bless you all wherever you may be uh, I was reading something a few moments ago and I found it to be extremely profound and I wanted to share with you all hopefully it will resonate with you as well and it's from a book called Fathul Qareeb Al Mujib, which is by Abu Muhammad Hassan bin Ali Al Fayyumi, Rahimullah Taala, who died 870 years after Hijrah. Not to be confused with Sahib Al Mujam Al Misbah Al Munir. That Fayyumi Ghayr, yeah, that's another Fayyumi. His name is Abu Al Abbas Ahmed bin Muhammad, and he died 100 years earlier. So 770 after Hijrah This Al-Fayyumi is someone else All right. Uh, this is an explanation for a hadith compilation entitled At-Targhib wa Tarheeb As you can see here And this hadith compilation was compiled by Al-Munthiri Who died 656 after Hijrah At-Targhib wa Tarheeb is a compilation of a hadith Encouraging the Muslims to Perform fadail, righteous actions, virtuous deeds And also it's a tarheeb, yani warning the Muslim against committing sins and despicable actions um, It's similar to Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Nawi Rahimullah In fact scholars have mentioned that a tarheeb or tarheeb is better than Riyadh al-Salihin and that's the students of knowledge, the, the imma, the imams in the masajid Should read this book to the awam, to, the Muslim, to those praying in the masjid So as to encourage them in performing certain acts of worship and staying away from certain misdeeds طيب, um, So for that reason, it's a, it's a very beneficial book Alhamdulillah Walil uh, asaf shadeed, many people, many students are heedless of this compilation But hopefully we can change that with uh, this benefit um, the benefit comes from the explanation by Al Fayyumi, Rahimullah. And it's related to the hadith which we all are familiar with, the hadith that's collected also in 40 Hadith Nawi, in which the Sahaba they said, that the Messenger of Allah gave a <clears throat> admonishment, he gave a reminder, he gave a sermon that was extremely powerful. So much so that it caused the hearts to tremble and the eyes to shed tears. Okay? Upon hearing this, they realized that this may be the last moment with the Messenger. So they wanted to seize the opportunity and benefit from the Messenger. So they said, فأوصينا. So advise us. And the Prophet of Allah went on to give a couple of advices and among them was usikum bi taqwa Allah wa sami wa ta'a that I advise you all with having taqwa of Allah and to listen to hear and obey the rulers the benefit is related to the explanation of this hadith uh, as you can see here this is the kalam of Fayyumi rahimullah so he says here ففيه استحباب استدعاء الوصية والوعظ من أهلها واغتنام أوقات أهل الخير والدين قبل وفاتهم he said that in this part of the hadith, right, when the Sahaba, they said, فَأَوْصِنَا So advise us, counsel us, that it is an indication to show the recommendation of requesting advice and counsel from its people. And seizing the opportunity or taking advantage of being with the people of khair with deen, the people of goodness, and the deen before they pass away. Now, being with the people who do good deeds, practice the deen, and call others towards it. Okay? Those who stay away from misdeeds, stay away from sins, and warn others against it. Yani in this hadith is encouragement around those people to be among those people while they are still alive. Now, I mean, without a doubt, the Ahlul Khair and deen, the best of them are the ulama. And the Prophet Sallallahu told us in an authentic hadith collected by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim that in Allah la yakbidu al-ilma intiza'an yantazi'uhu min al-ibad walakin yakbidu al-ilma biqabd al-ulama 
that Allah certainly Allah does not withhold knowledge by snatching it away from his servants okay rather he withholds the knowledge by taking away the souls of the scholars subhanallah bihamdi al khatib al baghdadi rahimahullah ta'ala he has a famous book a very important book that every student of knowledge especially the, the student of hadith they should read and review often and it's called al jami' li akhlaq al rawi wa adab al sami' and in this book he mentions a few nukat benefits uh, gems related to seeking hadith okay seeking knowledge of hadith and among the benefits he mentions is that it is young bari that it is imperative young bari li talibi idha nazala bil balad alladhi ilayhi rahal ay yuqaddima liqa'a man bihi min al mashayikh wa yata'ajjal al sama'a minhum he says that it is imperative for the student of knowledge who travels to and resides in and remains in that particular land to give preference in meeting the scholars therein. Okay? And to rush forth in listening to them, obtaining hadith from them, learning knowledge directly from them out of fear that something would happen to them. Preventing them from doing so. Yani, for example, death, death of a scholar. A scholar passed away, you're unable to benefit from him. Uh, perhaps a scholar will get become sick, right, and he's unable to teach. Yani, seek in, rush forth to sit under their feet and benefit from them before these things occur. Because once they're gone, they're gone. Khalas. There's no other opportunity to benefit from them. Naam. So, yani, it's important for us as Muslims to understand this concept. That wherever we are, we should rush forth in trying to benefit from the people of in while they are still here طيب. if there's scholars in your land rush forth to sit with them if there's no scholars in your land then travel to a place where there are scholars طيب. if there's no scholars in your land and you're unable to travel then you can at least benefit from students who traveled who spent years with the scholars and benefited and graduated you know from institutions and universities and spent years and decades with them طيب, benefit from these students طيب, if you're unable to benefit from these students then the, I'm sure there's imams there's people you know du'at who traveled for a bit or even if even if they didn't travel they understand Arabic they're able to translate to you the speech of the scholars benefit from these people while they're still here okay if there's not an imam perhaps there's a hafiz at least there's a hafiz of the Quran somewhere okay learn the Quran from him from her if there's classes going on in the masjid, attend those mas, yani attend those masajid and benefit from the classes, because you don't know when that opportunity will pass you by. Tayyib, right? That imam, that student, that person, that sheikh, he may move, he may die. Then you're unable to benefit from that person. All right. So it's important for us, yani ikhwan akhwat, to take advantage of the opportunity while we still have the chance. If there's classes in your message, the Arabic class, there's anything, even online, ya ikhwan akhwat. Don't delay. Don't uh, procrastinate. Iyaka wa taswif. Do not procrastinate. Beware procrastination. Tayyib. Uh, there's a saying that al fursatu sari'atul fawt, batiyatul awda. That the opportunity, it passes by quickly. Okay? Opportunities pass by quickly and they rarely return. And they rarely return. So if there's a scholar teaching in your masjid, if there's a talib al-ilm, there's an imam, hafib, anything, classes, anything, rush forth in attending it and benefiting from it. The Prophet he said, Badiru bil amali fitanan layl al The Prophet he told us that be prompt, be prompt in doing good deeds but before disaster strikes, before you are overtaken by fitan. Trials and tribulations rush, which will be like a part of a dark night, and which fitna is worse than the passing away of scholars, the passing away of the learned men and women of this deen. May Allah Azza wa grant us all success. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow us to listen to this speech and benefit from it and implement it. May Allah grant us barakah in our time. May Allah grant us good companionship. May Allah Azza wa Jalla write a good ending for us all. هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله